What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another first 12 figure focus. That's a lot of Fs. But I've got, <laughs> I've got some information this time focused on Luke Skywalker, the Farm Boy Edition. Ah, that's right. Luke, who wanted to pick up some power converters at Tashi Station with his whiny little voice and his moisture farming. Well, this is one of the most iconic Star Wars figures, and it's extremely difficult to price the Luke Farm Boy because there are so many different variations for him. I've got about, uh, I don't know, 10 or so different variations between bootleg. I've got some Polish and Hungarian bootlegs, and then, of course, I've got the licensed figures. And there's so many different factories. You've got the Hong Kong. You've got the Taiwan. You've got the Race Bar China. You've got the No COO Palatoys. Um, in addition to the different hair colors. So, and there's pant color differences. And it's, it's one of those figures that is extremely difficult to grade when, uh, when loose, when ungraded, to figure out what, it, what kind of score it would get and what it's really worth. And as you'll see, especially even with this example here that you see uh, in front of you, the, the arms and the legs tend to turn a little bit pinkish instead of that white, that bright white like you see on the torso. And um, getting high grade looks is getting harder and harder to do, given that these are 40 plus year old figures and the paint and the plastics are starting to degrade. So what I did was I pulled up some ungraded examples. I've got just some anecdotal evidence from Facebook sales. And then we're going to talk about some of the other different hair colors, some of the different countries of origin, COO, where they're manufactured. Um, and those COO differences and those hair color differences can mean major differences in price. And of course, you also have saber variations. You've got uh, lettered sabers. You've got double telescoping sabers. And then mint on card figures. Um, so the prices ha have really jumped over the last few years for Luke Farm Boys. And I thought it was kind of just another really cool figure to talk about specifically. And, you know, you guys seem to enjoy the Princess Leia first 12 figure focus if you haven't seen that video i'll put a link to that one in the description below and in the description for this video i'll also put a link to my some of my other luke farm boys in my collection so you can take a look at those but uh anyway let's go ahead and dig right in uh, the first off we you know I, I pulled up just recent as well as unrecent not recent uh figures that have sold here recently and one of the tricky things is is again looking at the hands you can see here this this the hands have got bubbling on the paint um, and you know oftentimes the belt is the other area where you start to see a lot of paint degradation or rub paint rub the belt on that one looks pretty good but the, the limbs what's noticeable about this one is number one the, the saber hand has got quite a bit of degradation going on and then the legs uh, around the tunic and then the arms they, they've got that pinkish hue to them and so I, I think that when it's when it's that noticeable you can really see it in this light here how pinkish those arms are that, that typically is going to get you, at best, an 80 grade. If you're lucky, you'll get an 80 grade. Probably with, with the hand damage, this one's probably closer to a 75 grade, is my guess. Uh, but the, the other thing you want to take a, look, a closer look at is the eyebrows and the hair. You can see the hair there's got some damage. So I, if, if I had to guess, just looking at the condition of this one, this is probably a 70 plus to a 75. That's probably my guess as to what it would grade at because of the hair damage. The eyes look good. The torso looks good. The belt looks good. It's just the hands and the plastic wear. Uh, there's some wear around the, the boots as well. So who knows what this thing would really score. Probably a 70 is my guess. Uh, I, you know, it's just really difficult to tell. Obviously, there's damage to the saber as well. Uh, this is a lettered saber. You can see there right in here uh, is where you'll see the letters. And they can be a single letter or double letters. Uh, and there's there's more there's more variations for the letters than you can that you would ever believe it looks like it's an nn on that one and and but there's dozens and dozens of different saber letter variations and uh it's true also for for uh darth vader especially there's lots of different variations uh the coos will be on the back of the leg uh there's also no coos but this is a standard hong kong the most common figure this one sold for 61 dollars and, you know, for, given the condition, that's probably about right. You know, the Sabre's been, been up, and there's a lot of paint wear. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, here is a blonde-haired China variation that's in extremely good shape. And you can see how clean those arms are. Look how bright white the, the white is on the legs as well as on the arms. The paint looks a lot better on the hair. 
as well as the hands. You can see how clean the hands look. A little bit of, little bit of bubbling going on on the saber hand, but not much. The saber is also not chewed up like the other one. Look, at, look how clean the boots are. Um, you know, this is listed as a C9.5. This is not a C9.5. This is probably like an 80 plus or an 85 would be what I would I'd give it. Uh, probably, you know, it, it all depends on who's grading it and how strict they feel like being. But to me, this looks like a good solid 85 grade farm boy Luke with the China. This is the raised bar China. You can see on the back of the leg there, it's got the little raised bar as well as the China stamp on there. So this one sold for $326 and you can get graded figures for that. So, you know, uh, it all depends on who's looking. Uh, if you want to, to really talk to an expert on Luke Farm Boys, I am not that person. You need to go look up Old Plastic on, on YouTube. He, he's got the, one of the most incredible Luke Farm Boy collections I've ever seen, most of them ungraded. I mean, he's got every kind of saber, every kind of hair color variation, whatever, you, whatever you're looking for. He has it, and and old plastic saws is a friend of mine, and and he he's got just a really incredible collection, as well as a a, a wealth of knowledge. I've I've uh, he's forgotten more about Luke Farm Boy variants than I will ever know in my entire life. Okay, so make sure to go check out old plastic. But uh, you know this is really for purposes of this video. It's it's not to show off my knowledge because I don't know I don't know much. Uh, but what what I am trying to show you is prices. What what prices look like right now, and uh, and they're all over the map as you'd expect, just depending on the variation and condition. But you know this is an ungraded example, raised raised bar china that sold for three hundred and twenty six dollars, plus another you know forty eight pounds shipping or sixty five dollars U S. So you know it again it, it depends on location. I, I feel like maybe in the U S. Uh, Hong Kong Luke Farm Boys are are not going to go for that kind of price. They will if they're graded. But, and I'll show you some here in a little bit, but for an ungraded example of 325 US dollars for that, that seems a little high to me for, for a China raised bar. That's not that uncommon of a, of a variant. Um, but what do I know? Here's another one. This is a Hong Kong uh, with a lettered saber. And uh, this one also looked to be in impeccable condition. Uh, this one actually, to me, looks even better than, than the last one, the raised bar China. Uh, you can see how beautiful those eyebrows are. The paint looks amazing. No, no kind of pinkish hue at all to the arms, and you know, for 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 references off of eBay. I mean, I've seen some on eBay, excuse me, off of eBay on Facebook, for example, in a lot of the different groups. I've seen them sell anywhere from you know for a seventy-five grade condition, loose, ungraded, but complete with a saber. Um, you know, probably on the lower end, very low end, one hundred and fifty bucks up to about two fifty. Uh, I, I don't typically see a $300 or $400 price tag for, for an ungraded standard Hong Kong loop. Now, a lettered saber is typically a, a little bit earlier saber variation. So, you know, the, the, the lettered sabers are, are pretty desirable because it's usually like a, you know, an earlier saber. But uh, this is what's called a three-line Hong Kong. And the two-line Hong Kong blonde-haired loops typically have the, uh, can be paired with the double telescoping saber, which is the earliest known saber variation. But uh, just just a really nice example. But I, I would, I'm not paying $407 US for that. That sold for 300 pounds. That's a big number for an ungraded example where you're taking all the risk on, you know, what you're really buying. So because um, you don't really know how tight the limbs are. I, I think this is probably a very nice, clean 85-ish example, if not higher than that. But, um, you know, it's just so hard to, to, to grade these because of the hair color. And, you know, you can see some very, very light specking here on the hair. I mean, that might be enough to knock it from an 85 to an 80 plus. Who knows? Um, here's another one that I found kind of interesting. This was an orange-haired Luke, 100% complete, it's advertised as. And, you know, it's very difficult to tell just based on photos, an orange hair versus a light brown hair versus, you know, some of these other. There's even an olive green hair that I've got labeled, um, a no COO olive green. So these orange-haired Lukes are, uh, you know, with the exception of like engineering pilots or, or prototype examples, pre-production type engineering samples, the orange hair looks going to be your most expensive. It's just the rarest of the rare, very difficult to find. They, they were commonly found down in Australia, actually, and uh, they're known to have very loose necks cracking around the neck. Um, but this is a beautiful example. It looks like the orange hair to me. And uh, that one had uh, a saber there. 
I don't know which sabers are paired with the orange hair. You know, you, you're talking, you're not talking to an expert on that, but you know, this one was listed for $3,000. Now, a couple of years ago, an AFA 85 orange hair look would sell for that. Now, ungraded examples are, are selling for that. So it, it's, it's pretty wild to see an AFA 85 orange hair look the, the last one I, I remember off the top of my head sold for $5,000 plus. So uh, the orange hair looks have really gone up in price a lot, and I, I don't foresee that changing. It's it's probably, in my opinion, one of the most desirable first twelve figures that you can that you can get. I mean, I, it's certainly more desirable to me than uh, than even a double telescoping look because tel double telescoping looks are not that rare. They're very they're actually pretty easy to find. I've got a couple of them myself, and they very regularly sell. And I'm, we're going to look at a couple of examples that just sold here recently. But the orange hair looks a different story. I mean, that's that's a very, very expensive figure, very desirable, and they don't come up a lot. I mean, you might see a handful or a dozen or so a year, but um, not even that many. But, uh, but again, you know, the, whoever buys this is taking the risk that this is truly an orange hair look. It hasn't been repainted. It hasn't had a head swap. That's another thing I've seen. Uh, where people have been accused of swapping out the heads uh, on a Luke and putting it on a new body so it's cleaner, you know. So you just got to be really careful there. Um, but this is the two-line Hong Kong. We just saw the three-line. This is the two-line Hong Kong, which is the correct COO uh, for the orange hair Luke. It's a two-line COO. Anyway, that's a, it's a beautiful figure, though. All right, now let's get into some loose graded examples. I, I tried to cover a wide gamut of different grades as well as a wide gamut of COOs or countries of origin as to where they're manufactured. This was the Taiwan. Um, I don't like it when they don't note the hair color, not, not the hair color, but the pant colors, um, because there's such a wide variety of, of pant colors. I've seen some photos on Instagram where, or, or old plastic, where you can line up all your looks and all the pant colors can be totally different shades of brown and orange. And uh, and so I like to see that on the labels when possible. And it's AFA does a pretty good job of it, but I feel like Collector Archive and UKG maybe could stand to do a little bit more detail on their labels. But this was a 75 plus with CAS that sold for $133. That, that's about right for a 70 to a 75 ish kind of grade. Um, I, me personally, I'm, I'm not paying nearly as much for a loop that has the saber in the hand like that. I tend to like to have the saber in a separate encased recessed you know recessed uh kind of accessory case versus in the hand like that that's just my personal preference i've got both though um i've got luke's as well as vader's that are, are graded with the saber in the hand as well as taped to the side or in a recessed case but to me um it just presents better to have the saber protected and kind of in, encased in its own little case especially with double telescoping looks. Obviously, that's that's almost a requirement for double telescoping sabers. Anyway, that one sold for $133.50 with free shipping. And then that same seller had another 75 grade Hong Kong. And you can see how much darker the pants are. Look at the pant color for that one versus the Taiwan, which, you know, it, to me, it looks a little lighter. Maybe it's not coming out as much, but, you know, if you do it really quickly, you can see how much lighter the Taiwan hair is, or ta Taiwan hair, the Taiwan pants are versus the Hong Kong and the Hong Kong even within Hong Kong figures I mean you can have dark pants light pants there's all kinds of different variations and uh, this one was a 75 grade again that one sold for the exact same price so that gives you a rough idea for a CAS 75 whether it's a Taiwan or a Hong Kong you're paying about 133 bucks in an auction that's a pretty good price uh, here was a 70 plus AFA and this was the blonde hair dark pants and this kind of goes back to what I was saying that you know, AFA does a better job, in my opinion, of labeling uh, the Luke Farm Boys than CAS and UKG because they label the hair color usually and the, the pants, what shade of pants it is. So this is the dark pants. I've got both the light and the dark pants. But anyway, it was this was a 70 plus that sold for $180 plus shipping. And I like the way this is in case better. This is what I'm talking about with the recessed saber case. It presents nicer to me. You can see how faded... The paint is on the eyebrows, though. Let's see if we can get a zoom in there. See how see how faded the paint is on the eyebrows, and you know you start to see some torso discoloration. You can see it's kind of browning versus the the arms and the legs. It's usually the arms and the legs that get the discoloration, the pinkish hue, and then the torso does brown. Um, but this one, it looks like the arms are pretty good and the legs are pretty good. It's just the torso is starting to brown. So all of those factors combined to give that the 70 plus score, but it's still sold for $180. 
Now here was an AFA 75 Luke Farm Boy. And this one was a Hong Kong blonde hair, dark pants. So the exact same figure as this one, in theory. And this one was a 70 plus, that sold for 180. This one was a 75, so the very next leg up in terms of grade, that one sold for 240. So that gives you kind of an idea of what the price difference is for going from a 70 plus to a 75 for the exact same figure. Um, let's see what else. All right, this is a very desirable one. This is a Hong Kong Luke Skywalker brown hair. This is one of the only ones I don't have. <laughs> I've got the dark, dark brown hair, but I don't have the, the kind of the lighter brown hair like this one. This is a nice figure. This one graded 80 plus, and the, the, the final price on this one was very reasonable relative to what I'm going to show you here in a little while. This one sold for $418. I would have paid that all day long. It's got the new case style with the recessed saber case instead of tape to the side. Um, and, you know, in terms of what caused that to get an 80 plus versus an 85, well, you got a little bit of paint wear right here um, as well as maybe some scuffing right there there's a little bit of eyebrow wear right there the hands look good but there is some overspray uh, on the white right there or mist paint whatever it is on uh, around the, the fingertips uh, maybe a little bit of paint wear down here so all, all those and you can see just a little bit of browning to the to the the white um, it's not much but it's just a little bit but all of those factors combined, you can see the eyebrow wear, all those factors combined to give that an 80 plus score. That, that to me is a pretty generous score, in my opinion. That's probably what held the price down. Um, this to me is more like an 80 at best, but an 80 plus is pretty generous. That's a pretty generous score given all of those defects that we just pointed out. And I'm, I'm not trying to disparage the, the figure. It's a gorgeous figure. I would take that in a heartbeat in my collection. But, um, but I think that it, with the eyebrow wear especially, that's probably the biggest detractor. Um, you can see that eyebrow wear. So I, I don't know. I don't know how that got an 80 plus, but that's what it got. And um, I think that if that eyebrow had been cleaner, it probably would have been over 500 bucks in, in, in my mind for, for that figure easily. Uh, here was a CAS 80 raised bar China. This one sold for $300. So you can see the differences there. Maybe just a little bit of pinkishness going on on the limbs, but pretty clean overall. That, that Relative to the last one that just graded 80 plus this one at 80 seems pretty harsh but you know again I, you know you don't know what is going on in detail with this figure it does look a little bit pinkish on the limbs which probably held the score down but that's a pretty nice example for uh, a raised bar china that sold for 300 dollars. i would have paid that all day long relative to the one that was ungraded right this one was a, a a raised bar china that was ungraded that sold for the same price so to me that that this one was a better deal in my opinion uh, here's another one that was UKG graded. Uh, I didn't find a ton of UKG. I, you know, my settings are just kind of wonky. But anyway, this one was another China. And this one was 85% with UKG. You can see how dark the limbs are, the arms, as well as uh, the white portion of the legs. Those are not very white relative to the torso. So I, I feel like this one, for example, is probably a little overgraded. This one probably should, should be a paint 85, but figure 80 because there's paint degradation going on. The eyes look amazing, the head looks amazing, but there is some 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 limb discoloration. It's starting, it's starting to fade a little bit. So to get an 85 for that's probably a little high, in my opinion. Uh, but that one sold for $333, and again, the price reflected that, right? Pe you know, discerning collectors who are buying these, they're looking, they're looking at these photos in detail. So that's probably the number one tip, really, is don't buy the grade buy buy the figure you know really really dig in and see what you're getting because if so oftentimes figures can be overgraded versus undergraded and we've seen a number of examples already of that uh, but 333 dollars i think is a fair price for what that is it's really an 80 ish kind of grade but that price is is in line right so it's 333 dollars this is an 80 grade that sold for 300 um you know this was an 80 plus but it was a brown hair so that's not exactly uh, apples to apples because people are going to pay more for that brown haired Hong Kong versus the blonde hair. The blonde hairs are much more numerous. But anyway, that's that's my personal opinion on that is that, uh, you know, the the the, bit, the bidders for this Luke, this specific UKG graded Luke, they took into account the torso or excuse me, the, the arm discoloration. And that's why it only sold for 333. Here's another one is 80 plus. This is another China. Now, the arms on this one, the arms and legs on this one look good. You know, they look pretty good. This one was graded 80 plus. And, you know, you look at the eyebrows on that one, 
relative to the brown hair Luke that was an 80 plus. And this is a much cleaner figure. Now, again, the, the brown haired Luke is much more desirable of a figure. It's, it's much more scarce in terms of numbers. But to get the same grade as this one, you know, it's a, it's a pretty stark difference in terms of the paint apps. Um, there are obviously different, um, you know, manufactured of different factories where those are manufactured, but I'm just talking about specifically about the paint wear and, and the arm discoloration. This one's a much cleaner 80 plus relative to the brown hair and the price reflected that it's a four it's a 405 sales price this one sold for 418 uh same grade but my argument is again is that if this had been a little bit cleaner of an 80 plus a little bit better of an 80 plus this would have blown past 500 dollars in my opinion all day long because it's it's a much more rare figure than this than the chinese than the chinese coo uh, here's another one. This was an AFA 80. This was a blonde hair, dark pants, Hong Kong. One of the most common Luke variations. Updated case. That one sold for 350. So it gives you a rough idea. Again, you know, 80 to 80 plus, you're going to be paying in that 300 to 450 range. That's a, that's a pretty good price point. Uh, here was another brown hair Luke. This one was CAS 80, and I did write that one down. What the final sales price was. It was li it was listed for 650. Uh, best offer accepted, and it sold for 500. dollars So. So again, that one sold for more than the AFA graded example that had a better case, but the eyebrows and the paint apps were not nearly as nice. So this one to me is pretty harshly graded. I mean, you know, these CAS photos are pretty garbage. They're always so blurry. You can't really tell what's going on. It looks like there's a fair amount of paint wear on the back here uh, around the utility belt and then on the back there. Maybe just very slight pinkishness on the, on the limbs, but the eyes look good. Much better than the 80, AFA 80 plus. So, in my opinion, CAS was pretty harsh with the grading on this one relative to the exact same figure that AFA graded 80 plus. But someone was willing to pay more for this one because it was cleaner. It presents better. So again, someone paid five hundred dollars for that one versus four eighteen or whatever it was for the for the other one. Now, here's another one. This is one I do have. Um, I think this this one's listed as the dark brown hair. I didn't pull mine down to compare it to this one, so I apologize, but it's only listed as brown hair. My 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 example of the Hong Kong dark brown hair, the label says dark brown hair. This one just says brown hair, and this color does look a little bit lighter than the one I have. The dark brown hair is probably, other than maybe the olive hair, no COO, palatoy, or the orange hair, obviously, the dark brown hair Hong Kong is one of the most desirable. And I, you know, again, this one, it's hard to tell. I had to pull mine down. This one looks lighter, though, just at first glance. It, it looks like a lighter brown than mine. But that one sold for 1800 bones, $1,800. And it was an AFA 85. Now, let's compare that one again to the other one. Let's see if we can find it. So this one is listed the exact same way. Brown hair, dark pants. And that's that. That's the hair color of it. So I think that this is this this figure is the same as the other one. Now this one was an 80 plus. It sold for 418. This one was an 85. So only one notch up in grade. Yet it sold for 1800 dollars. 1800 dollars. So that to me makes me wonder what my dark brown hair would sell for because mine's a U85 uncirculated 85 dark brown hair, not not the standard brown hair. And I paid a boatload for mine, and that was a long time ago. That was about seven or eight years ago, I think. It was, it was a lot, but even back then, it was a lot of money. One of the more expensive loot sales on eBay. Um, but I paid it, and I'm glad I did because I think that given that this one paid, uh, this one sold for eighteen hundred. Um, I would say that the one I bought, my dark brown hair, is is worth double what I paid for it now, and um, that's a good thing. You know, it's I, I, I'm guilty of overpaying. For a, a lot of figures, I haven't bought a Luke in a long time because I don't have any more room. <laughs> As you guys have seen in, in some of my videos, I, I just don't have any more room after uh, all the bootlegs and things like that that I've gotten. So I haven't bought one in a while, and they've gotten so expensive. So, but this was a really a really expensive purchase. I think that this is on the upper end for a non orange haired Luke. I, I I wouldn't pay this personally, but it, it was a gorgeous figure. I'm not gonna lie, and I can understand why someone did because at the end of the day. As long as Star Wars figures are still being heavily collected, people are gonna people are gonna continue to pay higher and higher prices for Luke Farm Boys. It's just one of the most iconic figures. Let's dig into a couple of double telescoping lightsaber sales. It hasn't been much, but 
I pulled off a low end one as well as a high end one. This one was an AFA 40. So it's about as low as you get. You know, you don't see that low of a, of a double, t double telescoping Luke's sale graded like this, but this was an AFA 40 and it was listed for a thousand dollars. It sold for $800. I looked up the, the, the sales price. The best offer accepted was $800 on an AFA 40. I mean, that's crazy. That's, I mean, I paid for my two AFA 80s. I paid about, about a thousand for mine. And so now for, for an AFA 40, for half the grade, it's it's almost going for the same price, which is just mind-blowing to me. Uh, and it did have an older style case. That's that's the older style case. Now, um, this is an AFA 85 del double telescoping saber. So the exact same figure that we just looked at that sold for $800, that was AFA 40. And an AFA 85 with the updated case, you can see how beautiful that is. That's a beautiful figure. That one sold for $3,050. And that's not out of line. I mean, it's, it sounds crazy, uh, but that's not out of line with where they're selling, uh, even on Facebook. So uh, to me, is it high? Sure, everything's high right now. But uh, but you're getting top flight, amazing figures. I mean, this is a, a figure that is like a blue chip stock that will only hold its value, in my opinion. Uh, even in a downturn, I just I can't see that price coming off too much. You know, it's just one of those figures that as long as vintage Star Wars figures are being collected, people are going to pay it. Now let's talk about some mint on card items or as close to it as you can get. And this is not exactly a mint on card. It's pretty darn close though. Uh, this is a 12 back, 12 back Luke. And um, it, it did appear to be in good shape overall. And you're like 1455, that seems really low relative to some of the other sales. Well, the reason it went so low is that it's got a pulled blister. So it's starting to pull off of the card a little bit. And so this would not be gradable, for example. So you, you could, in theory, grade it with Collector Archive or I guess maybe UKG, and they could loose grade the figure and note on the label that it's, you know, the blister is pulling away from the card. They could reinforce the blister to keep it from moving around anymore. But, uh, you know, it's got some scuffing here and there. But this is probably about as low as you're going to get these days for a 12 back Luke of any sort. It's just very tough to find these uh, at a reasonable price in the current market environment. So, uh, you know, I would say that realistically, it's more like $2,000 to $2,500 is kind of the now the, the minimum for a, a decently graded Luke, 70, 75, somewhere in there. We just talked about an, an AFA 85 12-back A Luke that sold for like, you know, I, I don't remember the exact price now, but it was significant. It was like $8,000. And um, the thing to keep in mind that uh, I was talking to a few collectors offline about this, and we've already talked about it a little bit earlier in the video about the figures. The, the figures can degrade even inside the blister. And, um, and so if it's an older grade, you know, you want to check out the the you know the serial number for either AFA or CAS or UKG and if it's available check check on their website check on their website to see when it was graded and if it was graded like 10 or 15 years ago that grade may not apply anymore and that was the case with that AFA 85 12 back Luke that sold for big money you know the figure has started to degrade inside of the blister and there's no way that if it was regraded now that it would get an 85 and uh, you know, again, it goes back to what we talked about with some of the loose graded Lukes that you, you don't want to buy the grade, you want to buy the figure, uh, and you want to make sure that what you're buying, no matter what the grade says, it matches your expectations and your price matches that. So, you know, again, this one was was a pseudo mint on card, but it started to peel away and still sold for $1,500. So pretty much any Luke's going to be expensive. Now, here's a, here was a pretty good deal, I feel like. Now, it was a yellow blister, but it was an ESB, and I'm not sure which card back it was, 41 back. ESB, and uh, you know, again, I, I don't, I don't know how, um, what, what kind of shape it was in, but it looked pretty good based on the photos. Um, again, yellowed, but that one sold for seven hundred and seventy-seven dollars on two bids, and this was sold on January sixth. So that, that's a pretty good, you know, lower, lower grade uh, or lower cost mint on card Luke Farm Boy, and uh, you know, the the problem with yellowed blister Lukes is that it makes it makes the figure look yellow right because the figure is so white um with the tunic and, and part of his legs that you know the the yellow doesn't help with with pr from a presentation perspective so just my opinion on it but you know this one did have some creasing and things like that probably like a 70 or 75 grade but for a mint on car loop for 777 dollars at least on ebay that's a that's a pretty decent deal um on the other end of the spectrum you know the alternate return of the jedi card back 
where it shows, you know, it's called the Luke Gunner card. You know, Luke Skywalker inside the, the, the Millennium Falcon Gunner seat. That alternate card back continues to accelerate in price. This one was a 77 back A. Luke Skywalker, and yeah, it's got the Gunner picture labeled on the CAS label. That was 85 plus. 85 plus unpunched really nice example that sold for two thousand seven hundred and sixty nine dollars you know a, a year or two ago that was probably more like two thousand dollars so uh you know you're, you're gonna be paying up right now for any for any lukes and you know the question is okay yeah, the question i get a lot from a lot of you is what when's the when's the insanity gonna end and i don't know i, I would assume it's going to be during the next recession because while we didn't see a major drop during um, the last major recession back in 08, 09. There was a dip. There was a dip in prices. <clears throat> and uh, I think that the market is kind of overripe right now. I mean, it just seems like everything is just so expensive that at some point uh, the other shoe's got to drop. But, you know, what do I know? Uh, here was uh, a 21 back B AFA 85 Luke. Now, this one looked pretty pristine. I, mean, I, don't, I don't remember the history of this one, but it looks like an older grade just based on the serial number, but it was graded 85 overall. Um, but the figure itself had not, you know, it hasn't yellowed or anything like that inside the blister. The, the paint apps on it looked fantastic. It was a punched example, but that sold for $3,499. Now, that, that's, you know, let's call that uh, about $800 more than that Luke Gunner. Um, but... You're getting a clear blister and you're getting a 21 back. So, you know, that's it's, that's a pretty nice trade-off to make. Whereas the other, you know, the Return of the Jedi car back is the alternate car back. That's pretty high demand too. So, um, but, you know, this is, that seems to be kind of in line with prices. I don't think that that's necessarily too crazy just given what, you know, given the high grade and, and the condition that it seems to be in based on, you know, some of the recent sales we've seen. But, um uh, I like to think that on the Facebook groups that you could get a better deal than on eBay. I, there's no way I'd pay three, three, thirty-five hundred dollars on eBay versus checking Deal or No Deal or some of the other you know really good Facebook groups for um, a, a loot because they do come up occasionally on on, on Facebook and uh, there's some very trusted groups out there where you can do a lot better on price and you know there's other uh, other auction platforms that don't you know maybe aren't nearly as expensive like certified link is a good one you know hakes and vectus of course those are those, those are great platforms as well but you got to pay such such expensive buyers premiums like 18 to 20 percent uh here was a 12 back a cas graded 80 that sold for five thousand nine hundred and sixty three dollars so that's a big number as well 12 back a 80 overall now the figure score was a 75 so you know even inside the blister CAS is recognizing that there's, you know, some paint degradation going on. It looks like around the limbs. They're, they're cutting a pinkish brownish thing going on there. But uh, that's a very nice unpunched example for a 12 back A, and the price reflected that. But that's still, you know, a good solid, let's call it $2,000 less than what that last AFA example sold for. That was just silly money. And I, I would argue it's in better shape. Um, here's a 12 back C. Uh, this was AFA 80. Archival case. Uh, the grades were straight 80s for the subgrades, and it looked about right. You know, the, the figure looks like it has some very slight discoloration going on on the white, but the rest of it looked very clean. That was also a Taiwan, which is very desirable. You know, the, I, I don't know all the different variations very well in terms of which one's more rare, but I would think that the Taiwan is probably pretty pretty desirable. It did have a price sticker, but it was unpunched. But uh, a beautiful, beautiful item. That one sold for 4750 I, I mean, to me, if, if I'm... If I have the deep, if I have the deep pockets, that uh, that buys a lot of these kind of higher end mint on cards, that one to me seemed like the best deal of the ones we looked at. Probably this one and the twelve back A uh, from CAS. That twelve back A looked pretty nice too. But uh, again, could you do cheaper on Facebook? Probably. You could probably do quite a bit cheaper than on eBay. You know, it's just the eBay prices have are going to be somewhat inflated because of all the. Uh, uh, you know, eBay selling fees that sellers incur versus Facebook. So just do your due diligence. Uh, you know, these kind of items are well outside of my knowledge base, well outside of my budget. So you want to make sure that you, you get with some collectors uh, that that collect these, that, ha that, that have experience buying these and know the prices inside and out. That's, that's certainly not me, but I thought I would at least show you guys what some of the sales prices are for these mint on cards because they are, they are pricey items and Really nice to look at, but 
for me, I, <clears throat> in my budget, I, I think that loose graded is kind of as far as I can go with Luke Farm Boys. It's just, just too expensive for me. Uh, anyway, I hope you found this information helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you are, are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. My Patreon supporters, as always, thanks for the channel support. And to my existing subscribers, thanks again for watching, and I'll be back soon.